Hello, welcome to Briar Creek Creations. This is a how-to video on the uh, lighted wall decor that you're looking at right here. So let's uh, jump right into things. So first of all, we selected our wood. The wood we're gonna be working with today is from uh, Thurman, New York. It's uh, David and Elizabeth Roseberger from uh, Strawberry Hill Family Farm and Sawmill. Check them out on Facebook. Uh, first you select your boards and we selected different widths and stuff for more of an aesthetically pleasing and that's what we had on hand. Uh, this is a white cedar, uh, it's a real light wood, uh, makes a perfect wood for this project that we're going to get. Uh, we selected several different pieces so we could get uh, the amount we needed. After this, uh, we moved over to the planer and uh, planed it down to a certain specific uh, thickness that we wanted uh, to work with uh, during this particular project because uh, we're going to tongue and groove it later. We'll get to that in just a little bit. Uh, the boards wasn't exactly perfectly straight which is, uh, it was rough cut sawmill and then dried. And um, so we're good with that. So a few passes on the old table saw, straightened that out. Now, but be much easier on a joiner. And we use a joiner now, but this uh, works really good. If that's what you got available, that's what you need to use. Uh, two or three passes on each side. We got some good straight boards to work with because you're gonna need to start out with some straight boards to do uh, the put together with the tongue and groove. Then we uh, moved over to our uh, miter saw and cut them to length. You can see which end of the tape measure I'm trusted with. Uh, you know, it's pretty obvious. Uh, get everything cut up to length uh, specifically and uh, how big you want your item to be. And at that point, I'll pause right here and tell you that uh, if you don't have a router table, if you will let the uh, financial manager hold the router while you do the tongue and groove, uh, it does not take long for them to want to go shopping for a router table as you can get a good uh, visual image of why this is a uh, so true and uh, this is probably not OSHA approved right here so you know don't try this at home go ahead and get a router table and uh, beg off on it or whatever you need to do to get one once you get it all routered up and uh, looking good your tongues and grooves done it's just a matter of uh, adding a glue down through the uh, the um, groove part of it and uh, we're uh, putting the glue in there really good with a brush so you get a good even coat because it makes a very very strong uh, connection and joint uh, after you get it uh, glued in like that. Just make sure your glue is spread out real good. Try not to get a lot of glue on the face of your boards. Uh, then afterwards, we'll put it in a lockdown with some clamps, and uh, I believe these are Bessie clamps, I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, a uh, clamp makes it real good. We're not a freehand artist, so we cheat. We use a tracer to do whatever artwork we're, we're gonna do on the boards. And uh, this works really, really good, and it holds good and true and steady. Just need a little bit of a dark room, and. And uh, I'll, I'll give a tap out. Uh, this is not a paid for thing or nothing like that. But uh, we love this uh, jaw horse, uh, jaw stand. Uh, holds projects really, really good. You go at different angles. It's a really neat thing to use for such as this and many other projects, whether you're rolling out off of outfeed off of a table or whatever you wanted to do with it. Works great. Uh, I give it a five, five, uh, no problem. After this, we're gonna pop some holes in it and. Uh, get out the uh, poor man CNC and uh, go, yeah, that's right, poor man CNC, that's what that is. And uh, we're gonna uh, carve it out, take your time doing this, support your board good, cause you don't want it uh, to, um, the vibration of the saw can uh, work on the boards. Although if you got a good glue up and everything, it shouldn't be a problem. Just take your time and don't try to shove through it and use a narrow blade to do it with. After this, it goes to the um, um, router table holder combination sanding, uh, station uh, you want to do uh, you can kick off here with like a 60 or 80 grit you want to pull this down pretty good you want to wind up with a good smooth surface to work off of uh, because of the tape you're going to use later and I'll explain that in just a little bit uh, work up to a 220 at least on this that'll get your edges smooth to where you're going to have your epoxy pour in just a little bit uh, you can see the grain of the wood starting to come out real good this white cedar from the Anirondack Mountains is really, really a beautiful, beautiful stuff. Uh, David and Elizabeth, you need to, uh, you need to cut us some more of this. Uh, we need to come back up there. Uh, after that, we're gonna build a frame that goes on the back with uh, Craig. We love Craig uh, and how it works. Puts together good, strong joints. Uh, works easy to work with. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, we can make this frame, and uh, we're gonna lay it out on the back. Put it together with uh, Craig screws. Holds really tight. Once we get this uh, framing put together, we're gonna lay it down on the back of this and we're going to uh, mark it so we will be sure and put it back into the same place when we get our glue on it. And um, 
pretend that you don't see once we get it marked and uh, we hold it back up as in right now. Uh, okay, right now, we're going to put the glue on it and as you can see, we're professionals with the glue because we put it on the wrong side. So we redone it, put the glue back on the right side, uh, yep, on the right side, and then screwed it down. You get a very, very strong hole right here, and this will, uh, is what your lighting is going to attach to and keep it away from the wall so you'll have a nice wall wash with your lighting and everything else. With that done, the uh, epoxy is about ready to kick in. So we're right here, we're using Stone Coat countertops. Massive shout out to Stone Coat. Uh, we've actually been to Oregon and uh, took a, one of their classes. Awesome people to deal with, with an awesome product. Um, two thumbs up on that, uh, five out of five stars easily. Um, I think the, this is a, a quick coat, which means it sets really quick. And this is what we're using to seal the uh, edges of our wood. It's very, very important to seal the edges of the wood. You can do this with a brush or your fingers, either way. You can see we've got a couple of projects going on of the same style, and you'll see different styles as we go, uh, different ones. Um, Vicki is using a uh, brush to put this on really quick, and uh, very important to seal this. Uh, we'll use three or four seal coats on this. Sealing is king. If you do not seal this, you'll wind up with uh, more bubbles than you care to even dream about and it'll wreck your project. Come back um, after sealing good, you'll torch, wait 10 minutes torch, wait 10 minutes torch. Usually three torches is good to go. Even if you don't see bubbles, go ahead and do your three torches uh, just to make sure that your wood is good and sealed because you do not want to start the next part of this unless you're sealed. If you're not sealed, your project will be ruined and you'll be uh, very, very upset over the deal. Not that we've ever done that. <laughs> anyway, after we get it all torched out and uh, ready to roll and almost burn our finger, uh, we're gonna tape the back of it with Tyvek tape. We found Tyvek works really good because number one, it was suggested to us because we wasn't smart enough to figure it out. Um, put the uh, Tyvek on uh, really tight and try to keep a good firm seal on it. And you can see we're going back with our fingers and making sure that uh, everything is sealed off. Um, don't be shy with the tape. You don't need to go all the way across the project. And the tape will pull up a little bit of wood or make a little bit of an impression on it, but it's no big deal. It's nothing that can't be sanded out. Uh, this is uh, quite some void, so we're gonna add a little bit of tape here. We're kind of scratching into the edges and making sure the tape is on stuck on itself really good. After you get this tape down uh, real good, you'll flip it over, put it on a flat surface. And uh, here we're gonna use some uh, stone coat casting epoxy. Casting epoxy is really cool because you can go with uh, like a quarter of an inch at a time and up to like three quarters of an inch, I'm sure. Check with stone coat and make sure. But uh, here we added a little gold metallic because we wanted a little bit of whisper of gold in this particular one. It's a fleur de lis, which means Louisiana. So um, that's why the gold. Just wanted a hit, you want to see a hint of it. You want to see a lot of gold in it. Uh, the pour here, you can pour about a quarter of an inch, and this is where you're going to be very proud that you seal the edges really, really good because you won't get a lot of bubbles. You'll notice there are some bubbles right now with the pour. That's very natural. Don't, don't freak out or nothing like that. Once you get a quarter inch poured, if you will set your cup down, like that's good, stop. Yeah, thank you. And uh, get out your torch. Watch really close how this, uh, this torch just makes the bubbles disappear and it'll look like glass even though it's not even dry yet. See how clear that becomes? Sealing is king, so don't forget to seal your project really, really good. We will made uh, about two more pours. I think we wound up with a half inch on that. Once you get it poured out, you can uh, uh, let it sit for at least 24 hours, I believe, on that. And uh, we pull the tape off the back, and at that point, uh, it's ready to go back to the sanding department. Now, once you get all the tape off, it's going to be a gummy residue and all, and you're going to be freaking out, uh, thinking it's runt. It's not. Uh, leave it alone. Let it air dry for a while. Uh, two or three hours. Send it to the sanding department. Start with like a 60 or 80 grit. Uh, once you get this going on, you'll you'll start to see, and uh, you'll think, oh, I've ruined my project because you're sanding over epoxy. Sand it out. I uh, promise you it will come out clear in the end. Uh, Stone Coat um, has a wonderful product. If you ever have any questions on using Stone Coat, they have an awesome uh, service department uh, that is willing to talk you through, uh, help you uh, figure out how much you need to mix. Um, Great, great guys, use them, use them. Um, they got a great product. Uh, here you can see we're getting a little closer down. It really looks like we frosted it up, but it's not the case. Once you get it all sanded down, be sure and seal the back before you go any further. Um, 
We're using, a, I think, a water-based polyurethane. We use a Titan cap spray to spray the uh, front. And once we get uh, that first coat on it, it comes out clear. And uh, we use three coats, four coats maybe. This is the lighting we use. I'll try to put a uh, link to the description on it. This is not the cheapest strip lighting. Uh, this is around 45, 50 bucks. But uh, this lighting does not get as hot as the cheap strip lighting. So, so please don't. I don't like stuff getting hot uh, next to a wall. So anyway, we're gonna wrap this all the way around in the outside. Uh, we're securing it with the tape that is a uh, sticky tape on the back of it. Also, we're coming back with some um, little uh, pegs that uh, somehow secure it to the uh, thing with screws, which is just a added part. When I get right here, I'm gonna mark it off. I'm gonna take a Dremel tool, make me a little circular cut because we want the lighting to come back up on the inside of the project because not only will it wash the walls with light, it will also wash the inside and make your epoxy light up really, really nice. For the back, we used a black on this. Uh, you can use whatever you want to or you can get crazy with it and use multiple colors. It's fun to experiment with, so don't be shy. It's just Lou Ann. It's not going to break the bank. Um, uh, do whatever you want on the color on that. Uh, once we get the back done, we screw it on. We like to use a Craig Short Craig Schools. Uh, screws because it uh, holds really really good also uh, once you get through uh, a pre-drill that don't take any chances we're using a red oak frame so we don't want to bust out once you get the screws in put the felt tips on the screws and uh, that way it keeps from scratching up your wall and everything it makes for a nice project and uh, you'll wind up with a really cool project like this you know some people say hey you shouldn't tell people how you build them but hey if you're gonna build it build it if you're not buy it from us Thank you for visiting BriarCreekCreations.com. Put your questions in the comments below. We would appreciate a like and a share. Be sure to follow us on our YouTube channel and Facebook. Uh, on the YouTube uh, channel, be sure and ring the bell and uh, be notified of upcoming videos.